blessed day, students, praying that you all are in good health, safe and sound in your own home. I am really glad that you still find time to listen to this video lesson, and that is highly appreciated. Anyways, today is another day to learn more about practical research, quantitative research in your case. So, let us start. Our lesson for today is Review of Related Literature. Our lesson's objectives are Synthesize Related Literature. From the synthesized literature and information given, create a conceptual framework and present a written review of related literature and conceptual framework of your research paper. We will start by synthesizing all the information we have gathered from the sources. Synthesize means combining a number of things into a coherent whole. The things you will synthesize are definitely from the references you have found and from the notes you have taken. You will not just summarize each idea from each source, but you will examine, evaluate, and analyze them individually and combine them to compare, contrast, conclude, and generalize. Review of related literature and studies should include all the evidences and references as it will serve as the foundation of your study. Readers will understand your reasons in conducting the research if you will provide substantial information. This review will serve as a guide as well in determining the gap between studies and how it will be filled in the succeeding chapters. This section of the paper therefore analyzes and synthesizes the related literature in the light of the problem and the research framework of the study. It further points out the results which are proven and accepted as facts. As stated by USC Libraries in 2019, a literature review may consist of simply a summary of main points from related sources, but in the social sciences, it usually has an organizational pattern and combines both summary and synthesis, often within specific conceptual categories. Let's learn the purposes of a literature review. Aside from giving support to the topic, these are the purposes of literature review according to Baraceros in 2016. First, to know the different concepts, ideas, theories that are related to your study and learn from them through connecting them with your own research paper. Second, to have more basis in proving that your research topic is correct and relevant. Third, to learn more terms, especially the unfamiliar ones that are related to your study. Next, to connect the past researches, thesis or dissertation to your current research study. And lastly, to know the connectedness of your paper to the current research study or to the current situation of the country and of the world. But how are we going to select a relevant literature? Once you have found the articles, books, or information, you need to examine the materials. And to help you in choosing the right reference, check out these guidelines. First, examine the title. A good title should be specific and contains the major variables of the study. Screening for inclusion. This refers to the applicability of the studies previously identified and selecting or excluding them. Extracting data. This involves gathering applicable information from each primary study included in the review. Analyzing and synthesizing data. This last step requires the authors to organize, compare, collate, summarize, aggregate or interpret the information previously extracted to suggest a new contribution to the body of knowledge. In doing the guidelines, you must be selective in choosing the right context. 
With this, you do not have to write or copy everything you should only choose the words, terms, or phrases that are highly relevant and helpful to your topic, never to omit important ones. Now, the characteristics of materials cited. Samo, as cited in Prieto in 2017, enumerated the different characteristics of the literature and studies to be acknowledged in the present studies. First, materials must be relevant to the research topic. Second, materials must be as objective and unbiased as possible. Third, materials must be as recent as possible, up to 10 years back. In taking down notes for your review of related literature, you should also include where you get those details so that you can acknowledge the creator. There are different formats in citing sources for the research paper. Here are some of the most common citation styles. APA or the American Psychological Association it is an author date based citation style. This means the emphasis is placed on the author and the date of a piece of work to uniquely identify it. Author, date, or author, then date is enclosed in parentheses. Next is the MLA or the Modern Language Association. It is the most often used in arts and humanities papers, particularly in the USA. It is probably the most used of all citation styles. Unlike in APA, MLA emphasizes on the author and page of the article or source used. Author, page, and then author, or then the page is enclosed in parentheses. The third style is the AMA or the American Medical Association or Vancouver. The Vancouver system is mainly used in medical and scientific papers. Lastly, that the Chicago Manual of Style. It includes two systems for in-text citation such as author date system and notes bibliography system. The NB system is mostly used in historical papers. It is almost similar to that of the APA in text citation style. Let's take these examples. For APA, Reyes, comma, 2012, close parenthesis, or Reyes, open parenthesis, the year, which is 2012, and then close parenthesis. For the MLA, open parenthesis, Reyes, page 917, then close parenthesis. For the AMA, or Vancouver system, numbering with either square, like that, or curve brackets, can be used as long as it is consistent. For example, research is fun, then square, one for the chicago system open parenthesis reyes 2012 close parenthesis or reyes open parenthesis uh, 2012 and then close parenthesis how are we going to use the proper cmos citation so not all the time that author is only one there are instances that authors are multiples and or if the date is not available. Now, when citing multiple authors, this refers to two to three authors, in a parenthetical citation, use the word and instead of ampersand. Second, when citing multiple authors or four to 10 authors in a parenthetical citation, write out the last name of the first author plus et al, without comma after the last name. If there is no available date of publication, you can use the access date or use the abbreviation ND. If there is no author, cite by its title, but make sure to make it shorten or sh shorten up to four keywords.
next would be how to write a synthesis. Previously, you have known what to write articles and sources you should select. In this part, you will be given tips on how to synthesize all the information from different sources. It is like creating a puzzle. You have to combine the right piece and make a whole picture. Here are the tips. Tip number one, collect all the literature and studies related to your research and could somehow answer your research question. Tip number two, from each literature and study, select the most relevant part. Take note of it, analyze, paraphrase, and then summarize. Tip number three, after paraphrasing each literature and study, Summarize it by critically comparing and showing their differences and then relate it to your current study. What are the techniques for writing a synthesis? Remember to take note as well all the references you have selected. Techniques for writing a synthesis. First, for the summary, the most complica uncomplicated way of assembling a synthesis. Here you write one after the other the most relevant information and sources you gathered. Number two, example or illustration. For the reader to clearly understand the connection of each literature and study, it would be better to give off some examples or even illustrations. 3. Two or more reasons. This one starts with stating your research topic or objective, then provide the reasons why it is true, timely, or relevant. Of course, you have to support all your explanations with the evidences you have gathered. May it be literatures and studies. 4. Technique Comparison and Contrast this one needs a thorough understanding of your topic and examination of your collected references. You have to explore each of the relevant literature and see its similarities and differences to other literatures you have and to your research topic. Here are the guidelines or tips in writing your review of related literature. It is necessary to follow these guidelines so that your reader will have a smooth reading about the literature and would have a better understanding of what you want to explain. Here are the guidelines. Guideline number one, refer to the statement of the problem in discussing the literature so that you would know what variable comes first, second, etc. Okay, so the next guideline or tip is avoid plagiarism. It's easy to copy, cut, paste, but you will not achieve a coherent whole if you do this. According to the Merriam Webster Online Dictionary, to plagiarize means to steal and pass off or the ideas or words of another as one's own, to use another's production without crediting the source, to commit literary theft, to present as new and original an idea or product derived from an existing source. Remember that if there is word-for-word -word copying beyond a short phrase of someone else's text, that selection should be enclosed in quotation marks and reference at the location of the article. Third, keep in mind the citation guideline to be used and give credits appropriately. Fourth, any citation mentioned in the body should be congruent with that of listed in the reference list or bibliography. The last part of your literature should highlight the gaps in literature and smoothly insert the reason why you are conducting the study. That ends our lesson today. Thank you for listening 
and see you next time.